Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to our 11th Get to Know Your State Forest uh, webinar. We are here today with Stephen from the Corn Planter State Forest. Um, so thank you for joining us, Stephen. Um, my name is Sarah Corcoran. I use she, her pronouns. I am the deputy director for the Pennsylvania chapter of the Sierra Club, and I am also the coordinator for the Save Pennsylvania's Forest Coalition, which has been putting together this series. Um, if you'd like to watch any of the other recordings that we have done in the past, I will be sharing our um, YouTube page out with the recording of this episode of this uh, webinar, as well as our previous ones, um, one later on this week. Um, I did want to flag that with the uh, fires that are happening in Canada right now, you might hear a little bit of congestion. I will do my best to speak uh, loudly and clearly, but if anyone is having issues, um, just let me know. Um, I'm going to enable the closed captioning now. So if anyone needs to utilize the closed captioning, it is available. Just hit the little CC on the bottom of your screen and it'll, it'll pop up. Um, so we will be in this space for about an hour. We've got uh, about 45 to 50 minutes of presentation with 15, about 15 minutes of Q&A at the end. If anyone has any questions throughout the presentation, please go ahead and put it in the chat. Um, at the end, I will read off any of those questions uh, to Stephen to answer, so that way we don't have to worry about folks coming on and off of mute. Um, but if it's, a, if it's a short question and I'm able to answer it during the presentation, I will do my best to do so. Um, if any, if you come up with any questions after we're done with our presentation today, um, just send them to myself or send them to Stephen. He will be sharing out his his email information, and we'll we'll do our best to answer any questions that you have. All right. With that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Stephen right now, and um, sit back and enjoy learning more about Corn Planter State Forest. Thank you very much, Sarah. Uh, welcome and thank you for joining today's presentation. As Sarah said, my name is Stephen Laskowski and I'm a service forester here in the Corn Planter Forest District. I've been employed with DCNR since fall of 2021, so I'm relatively new. And like you, I enjoy many of Pennsylvania's resources and what we have to offer, and I'm honored to speak with you today. Uh, the purpose of today's presentation is get to know your forest, specifically the Corn Planter State Forest and the surrounding interests and learn why our state forest and district is a special place in Pennsylvania. For, for the purpose of administering bureau management and programs across the 2.2 million acres of state forest, Pennsylvania is divided into 20 districts. I work in the Corn Planter Forest District, which is in the Northwest region in the top, top left corner. And that encompasses Erie, Crawford, Warren, Forest, and Venango counties. This map is a fire map, so our boundary actually does extend all the way around Venango County. State forest management is administered uh, through a cooperative effort involving field staff in each of the 20 districts located throughout Pennsylvania, as well as support through our central office located in Harrisburg. Each district is responsible for protecting all forest land within the district from fire, destructive insects, and disease. The Corn Planter Forest District is shown here in light green on the top left. Our district is 2,447,458 acres, including our 1,585 acres of state forest lands. So of the 2.2 million across the state in 50 of the 67 counties, shown in dark green, our corn planter state forest land represents less than 1% of the total state forest land base, but it's just as special as all the other state forest lands. Diving a little closer, our state forest land base is shown here again in dark green. It's fragmented across three separate counties in Northwestern Pennsylvania, and that includes Forest, Crawford, and Warren counties. Our district office is located in Warren, PA, and that's marked by the evergreen tree in Warren County. Our surrounding district landscape has many state game lands that are in brown and state parks that are in yellow. The Allegheny National Forest, managed by the U.S. Forest Service, is situated on the eastern side of our district, 
And they're an important cooperating agency and national forest right here in our backyard. So surely there's no shortage of excellent recreational opportunities and important ecosystems in every county in our district. Staffing varies in each district, but our organizational structure is the same. Uh, this organizational chart represents when we're at full staffing. So in our forest district 14, it's managed by our district forester and assistant district forester. The district forester leads our district and is responsible for executing all sections of the state forest resource management plan, which I'll discuss in a little bit. And that manage and conserve the forest resources within the corn planter forest district. The assistant district forester concentrates on the oversight and implementation of programs, as well as manages our forest service foresters, forest technician and intern here in the district. We have two clerical staff, a clerical assistant and an administrative assistant that support our district internally and also serve as the initial point of contact for inquiries uh, into our district. We have one maintenance staff and two semi-skilled laborers that help keep our state forest land and grounds of high recreational quality. We have five foresters, each responsible for on the ground implementation of plans to manage and conserve our Commonwealth's forested resources. Our fire forester manages our fire program on both public and private lands, working with prescribed fires, and that includes prevention, suppression, and support to, to the various uh, volunteer fire departments. Our forest service foresters, and I'm one of them again for Erie County, work a lot with private landowners and cooperating agencies to enhance our rural and urban forests through the technical assistance and support of our projects and programs towards our mission of the Bureau. The foresters within the corn planter are all assigned primary work functions and areas, but we're really often involved in several disciplines. We do have uh, one intern and uh, forest technician that supports our field work on our, with our forestry staff on our forest lands and in our rural and community forestry program, which I'll discuss later. All positions within our district are responsible for establishing and maintaining working relationships with our partner agencies and entities. And that includes a lot of you know, positive public relation interactions. And of course, projecting a positive image of the Bureau of Forestry and specifically the Corn Planter Forest District. This is a public use map of our state forest land within the corn planter showing our state forest land tracks. We have six tracks fragmented over three counties in the district. There's three, tra in three tracks in, in Crawford County and those are our Ingram tracks. We have Hunter Run and Tank Hill tracks in Forest County and Anders Run Natural Area in Warren County. And I'll discuss their acquisition histories next. So our first track uh, that we acquired was our Hunter Run and Tank Hill tracks uh, in May 2nd of 1949. It's approximately 1,200 acres. Um, and June 7th, so a little over a month later, we purchased an additional 63 acre track and that's the Tank Hill track. And that completed our 1,263 acres of our corn planter state forest in Forest County, just Southeast of Pleasantville and just North of Tyanesta. Since its purchase, this land has been under the management of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And this area has been conserved and managed for the public, for you, to provide as many benefits as feasible. The second tract is our Anders Run Natural Area, and that was acquired on January 12th in 1989. And we purchased this from the Western Pennsylvania Conservancy. It's a 99 acre tract located along Duns Eddy Road and Allegheny Spring Road, about one mile south of Route 6, uh, near the community of Irvine in Warren County. This has a long history uh, of the track's preservation, and it involves several local cooperators, uh, such as the DeFries Family Foundation, the National Forge Corporation, and the Northern Allegheny Conservation Association. This track contains some of the finest old growth white pine and hemlock left in the state. Because its biological uniqueness and importance, it's now managed as an official natural area in our district and for the state. 
Uh, natural areas, by the way, are managed by allowing physical and biological processes uh, with human intervention limited to hiking trails, canoeing, and that that's required for public health and safety. These areas are set aside to provide locations for scientific research of natural systems, to protect examples of typical and or unique plant and animal communities, and to conserve outstanding examples of natural interest and beauty, which this track definitely has. Our last, last tracks are the Ingram tracks of Crawford County. And these are three separate parcels, and again, Southeast Crawford. In the late 1800s and the early 1900s, the Ingram family uh, began acquiring property around Crawford. By 1946, they've acquired nearly 130 acres. Gerald Ingram uh, really had a strong devotion to his land and practiced sustainable management. And in 1995, uh, he was the sole surviving owner. He donated the 125 wooded acres to the Bureau of Forestry with the direction that these properties be utilized to demonstrate sound, sustainable silvicultural practices for private landowners. These properties have been the site of many workshops over the years, nature hikes, and sustainable timber harvests. They offer a unique perspective into private forest land management, as well as the challenges faced by many private landowners. I'm going to discuss a little bit about our, our history here in the district. Our district maybe a little, name may be a little misleading because we don't actually plant corn uh, in honor of Chief Corn Planter, who's a famous Native uh, American chief of the Seneca tribe. Chief Corn Planter was instrumental in maintaining peace between the new American government and League of Iroquois between 1784 and 1812. The Corn Planter State Forest is situated along the western shore of the Allegheny River. Like much of Pennsylvania, this was once virtually unbroken forest, compromised of oak, chestnut, white pine, and hemlock stands. This was a virgin forest, essentially undisturbed and unaltered. Native Americans did live in this region and specifically along the Allegheny River. And one area of significant interest and importance in our district is the Buckaloons Recreational Area, just next to Andrews Run. It's managed by the U.S. Forest Service. And this is, there was a site of a former Sena Seneca Native American village that has been preserved by the Forest Service and studied by many local universities and colleges. As first settlers came into Penn's Woods, which was noted for its vast uh, forest and mineral resources, our condition changed. So vast timber tracks were seemingly inexhaustible, provided charcoal for the iron and steel industries, ties for railroad, wood for fuel, lumber for homes and buildings, and chemical wood industries. As the increasing population of the state turned forest, land into farms, and as expanding industry consumed more and more wood, the amount of standing timber in our state grew smaller and smaller. Logs, lumber, and wooden shingles were rafted from Northwest Pennsylvania all the way to Pittsburgh and even as far South as New Orleans. So we were shipping much uh, resources uh, in and out of our state. Railroads provided access to previously inaccessible areas, which increased production and providing, provided a safer and easier transport. Many small towns in our district prospered, including the town of Sheffield, Tynesta, and Cory. In August of 1859, that has really important significance in our district and state forest land. It marked the first successful oil well in the country by Edwin Drake, and really a shift towards a petroleum dependent economy. The location of the first oil well is now the site of the Pennsylvania Museum Commission's Drake Well Museum, and that can be found just south of Titusville in Venango County. The blue dot on the map is, is of the Drake Well Museum and our corn planter Hunter Run Tract is circled there in red. Hearing of all, all the success and the riches of oil, people flooded into the area 
And in January of 1865, uh, they found oil in Pithole Creek, just east of Titusville and near our Hunter Run Tract. The city of Pithole was founded and was very prosperous. At one point, mail here only exceeded, was only exceeded by Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. In September of 1866, so about a year later, wells stopped producing. And shortly thereafter, the town was almost destroyed by fires. As the boom was almost over, people began to desert the city. And by the end of 1866, Pithole was a ghost town. Uh, the site of Pithole is about five miles west, again, of our Corn Planter State Forest Hunter Run Tract. And that's now a Pennsylvania historical site. Not all the impacts of timbering, oil development, and railroad construction were positive. Lands denuded of vegetation and sparks from trains resulted in large scale fires, destroying the timber, oil, and chemical wood industries. As this aerial image shows from 1939, uh, can be observed on the Corn Planter State Forest. So again, this photograph here depicts the impact, especially of the chemical wood cuts on on land, now part of the Corn Planter State Forest. So again, this is our Hunter Run tract image in 1939, and, and it has changed drastically since then. So today, young stands of timber are second or even third generation to be growing there. And that's typical after the cutting of our virgin timber for lumber, the chemical wood industry and oil development. Deserted oil wells can be found scattered across our, our hunter run tracks, which are just relics of past land use. We do have several producing wells that are still maintained by private commercial companies who own the subsurface mineral, mineral rights of the tract. Other significant events in our district include tornadoes, specifically the the one on May 31st, 1985, that destroyed 46,600 acres, 92 acres of which were on our state forest land, again at our Hunter Run Tract, that's represented by the Green Star. That drastically shifted our management direction there. We did a salvage sale that was conducted over 85 acres, as some of the parts were just deemed inaccessible. In 1990, a wildfire burned over 600 acres, again, including 100 acres on state forest land. Some of the same acreage burned was previously affected by the tornado. And in 2003, a major windstorm occurred, significantly de destroying the Kinzu Bridge, which was under renovation at that time. And that same windstorm damaged about 150 acres on the Hunter Run Tract. tract. So besides some of the history just mentioned, a little bit of the more cultural and historic resources. Um, a significant one is the Little Stone House in the Hollow. And this is located at our Anders Run natural area. It was built in 1840s by General Irvine, whom the small town nearby is named after. It's considered among the oldest structures existing on Pennsylvania lands in PA. It serves really as an important connection to our resources and history, the surrounding landscape, and the cooperative efforts between agencies and specifically uh, DCNR and the US Forest Service, which owns, owns land right next to it. Some additional information about our state forest land district. Uh, the corn planter is part of five physiographic and really these different eco regions drive major changes in both natural vegetation, land use patterns, and really due to ele elevation, topography, and soil type differences. The high plateau eco region where our Hunter Run and Anders Run natural area are, consists of dissected plateaus, rounded hills and low mountains and narrow valleys. Our tree cover there is more or less Northern and Allegheny hardwoods and oak dominated forests. Contrary to that, the Northwestern glaciated plateau ecoregion where Ingram tracks are, have broad rounded uplands and long linear valleys. It's more rolling terrain and it has numerous glacial features. Um, that could be things like kettles and wetlands. Tree covers predominantly Northern hardwoods and your beech birch maple forest types. Other minor, my, minor ecoregions in our district include the Deep Valley region in Northwestern Warren County, the Pittsburgh Low Plateau in southern Venango County, 
and the central lowlands along Lake Erie in Erie County. Our surrounding area is a mix of rural communities, national forest, state game lands, state parks, and private lands. The western side of our district, so Erie and Crawford, is, is more of a mix of fields, forest, and wetland communities. While the eastern side of our district, so Forest, Warren, and, and Venango counties, um, contain more uh, variety of cover types as seen on this chart here. Uh, so we are heavily forested in the district. Now our state forest land, we have a lot of oak. Oaks are our predominant species. And that's the major community type. Again, it's in, in Forest County. Our Hunter Run Tracks, our largest tract. There's a smaller representation of Northern and Allegheny hardwoods. And again, Allegheny hardwoods really mean more black cherry dominance in a, in a forest, as well as conifers followed by hardwood types and red maple. All of these forests are important and they do contribute to the overall health of the forest and towards diverse wildlife habitats. So about our mission, our state forest system supports a multitude of resources, uses, and values. It provides water and air purification, recreational opportunities, aesthetic beauty, plant and animal habitat, and economic benefits through the provision of wood products uh, to society and the environmentally sound utilization of our mineral resources. So our mission of the Bureau of Forestry is to ensure that the long-term health, viability, and productivity of the Commonwealth's forests and to conserve native wild plants. We have guiding documents or plans that help enact and support this mission. So starting from the top, we have our strategic plan or Penn's Woods uh, from 1995. And that provides critical policies and directions for achieving our long-term health and sustainability of Penn's Woods. That plan is currently being updated and um, uh, should be available sometime soon. Our state forest resource management plan just underneath that is the primary instrument that we use to plan coordinate and communicate management of our state forest system. It takes the broad policies from our strategic plan and then forms them into focused goals and objectives. It lays the groundwork for ensuring that our overarching goal of state forest management or ensuring sustainability is achieved. The plan provides the framework for staff like me to approach our work and make management decisions. Secondarily to that, and importantly, it communicates to you or stakeholders, citizens of Pennsylvania, how your forest is being managed. Further refining our state forest resource management plan is our district resource management plan that was updated in 2019. And that focuses on specific landscapes and resources within our district and the specific goals and objectives in managing these resources. We also have a district activity plan and that's a yearly goals and objectives set forth here in our district. All of these plans are publicly available on DCNR's website. So healthy ecosystems provide essential goods and services for humans and millions of other species, both large and small. And ecosystem management is the principal strategy of how we manage our state forest and our resources. It conserves natural patterns and processes of our forest while advancing its long-term sustainability. It promotes conservation of plant species and animal communities and landscapes that support them and the needs and values of people as well. And it's really a holistic integrated approach. And this, this is, again, the principal strategy for how we manage our, our state forest and all of our resources. In order to be ecosystem management on the ground, uh, we delineated landscape management units across the state in 2017. There are three LMUs, landscape management units, found in the corn planter. There are Anders Run Natural Area, our Hunter Run Area, and Ingram Tracks. Together, they're all about 20,000 acres in size, so they extend beyond our state forest land footprint. They serve as a fundamental planning unit for implementing our eco ecosystem management approach at a landscape scale, and therefore serve as building blocks for our district resource management plan. 
This approach really helps us facilitate communication when we're thinking about the landscape and cooperation on state forest land, as well as adjoining lands, including other forest districts, landowners, and agencies, as our tracks are really just part of a bigger contiguous forested landscape. And there's a close up of the tracks right there. So as you travel throughout the state, you'll see examples of our forests at work using ecosystem management as a guiding principle. They're managed by natural resource professionals, both in district and with support from our central office to meet goals and objectives of the public. Some of these management practices include um, the practices here listing on the slide, which I'm gonna go over each one of these. The limited acreage of our state forest uh, system provides a unique opportunity for the corn planter to demonstrate sustainable forestry management practices on a scale more relatable to landowners. We also utilize our lands to promote forestry and conservation through public awareness, outreach, and education. Each of these management activities play a vital role in the conservation of our state forest system. So let's discuss some of these management practices. So managing our timber resource. According to the Conservation and Natural Resources Act, one of the purposes for the creation of our state forest system was to provide a continuous supply of lumber, wood, and other forested products, and thus is an important economic resource in Pennsylvania. Managing timber and non-timber forest products is central to the Bureau's mission, again, to ensure the long-term health, viability, and productivity of Commonwealth's forests and to conserve native wild plants. Forest products, whether they're timber or even non-timber, are managed on our state forest land as again, a component of ecosystem management and provide a wide array of environmental, social, and economic values. To do this, the Bureau created a harvest allocation model that sets timber harvest schedules for each district. Our annual timber harvest schedule is 10 acres a year. Uh, the goal of the harvest uh, allocation model are to promote and maintain desired landscape conditions, create a diversity of successional stages and native forest communities that benefit wildlife, balance our age class di distribution so we have different habitats and ages growing in our forest, and provide a sustainable yield of quality timber to our economy. Our 2.2 million acre state forest system is one of the largest dual certified forests in North America. The forests are certified under Forest Stewardship Council and Sustainable Forestry Initiative Standards to provide environmentally appropriate, socially beneficial, and economically viable timber resources. And these are third party audited. Um, and we use silviculture, an art and science based way to manage these resources. And that includes harvest to promote wildlife habitat, regeneration or growing new trees harvest to improve the growing condition of other trees, and salvage harvests after natural disturbances, among other types, as well as strictly adhering to Pennsylvania best management practices with each of our timber sales. We also use timber harvests as a tool to show private landowners options and techniques when harvesting timber on their own properties. That's a large, again, again a large advantage when we're relating to private landowners and providing technical assistance. So the picture on the top is of a, a horse logging operation. That's on our Strawbridge tract, one of our Ingram tracks in Crawford County. This was a 27 acre timber sale uh, harvested by horses and likely the first horse logging operation on state forest land in many decades. And to note, timber harvesting is not permitted at our Anders Run natural area. So we do uh, have some very important uh, wildlife resources and we manage them. And that includes things like white-tailed deer, black bear, wild turkey, rough grouse, woodcocks, squirrels, coyotes, possums, and porcupines. Different reptiles and amphibians can also be found throughout our state forest, including various snakes, turtles, frogs, salamanders, and toads. Numerous aquatic species are found and present in our five streams on our state forest land. That would be Anders Run, 
Hunter Run, Jameson Run, McCafferty Run, and a tributary to Muddy Creek. Most of those are on our, our Hunter Run tract. Many different types of songbirds and raptors live in the corn planter. And some of the more unique specimens are the cerulean warbler, sawweed owl, and even the bald eagle. So historically, some of the areas of Hunter Run were under the management for woodcock. And although much of these areas have advanced past the early secessional really needs, um, other areas are considered for young forest habitat management, specifically for grouse, woodcock, and other species that really depend on young forest habitat. And that's, again, where a lot of these timber sales can come into play, is to promote these types of habitat on our state forest land. An extensive complex of ephemeral or vernal pools can be found on our Ingram tracks of the corn planter state forest. These pools fill with water in the spring and generally dry out in the summertime. On that track, there's more than 25 vernal pools, ranging from about 10 feet to a little over 100 feet in length. These are seasonal wetlands. They provide open pools and shrub forested uh, wetland habitats for significant breeding populations of different amphibians and distinct species that cannot breed in permanent water. The Pennsylvania Outdoor Corps, which is financially supported through DCNR, the Department of Labor and Industries Reemployment Program, as well as contributions from uh, Pennsylvania Parks and Forest Foundation, offer work experience, job trainings, and environmental education to young people uh, who complete recreation and conservation projects on our public lands. This is a picture of our young adult crew at our Hunter Run Tract, and there could be three types of crews a nine month program for young adults ages 18 to 25, a nine month cultural resources crew, which you have to be a college graduate, and a six week youth crew ages 15 to 18. In our district, the POC crews have helped with various management projects, including construction of habitat boxes that support bats, daylighting crab apple trees that we find in our forested tracks um, to increase their growth, they construct brush piles for small mammals, trail work, and even herbicide treatments of non-native plant species, specifically on our Hunter Run tract. Other active projects we're looking for is expanding uh, current opportunities and plans, such as uh, the re again reestablishment of the Woodcock Management Area to help re reintroduce that that specific bird on our state forest land. White-tailed deer are perhaps one of the most influential wildlife species in, in our forested ecosystem. When their population is out of balance with habitat, they can impact our state forest by browsing tree seedlings, eating shrubs, eating wildflowers, and really beyond the capacity for them to reproduce, which impacts um, the ability for a forest to have a sustained, healthy, fully functioning ecosystem. To accomplish our mission of conserving Pennsylvania's forests, the Bureau of Forestry manages deer on its lands and promotes sustainable deer management on all Commonwealth forests. We do this through the Deer Management Assistance Program, and that's DMAP, established by the Pennsylvania Game Commission, which allows us to promote forest regeneration by targeting most vulnerable and severely impacted tracks for antlerless deer harvest. So the Bureau's goals for DMAP are again are to promote those diverse, healthy, natural habitats that support our wildlife diversity and healthy deer populations, establish and maintain regeneration, promote healthy, sustainable forests and native wild plant communities, and provide additional hunting opportunities. To meet these goals, we, we follow these objectives. We wanna increase the number of native plants that are indicators of a balanced deer population, we wanna increase the number of regeneration sample plots that are adequately stocked with desirable trees. We wanna increase the number, uh, I'm sorry, decrease the number of plants browsed by deer. We don't want that increased. We also wanna reduce the need for fences uh, for successful forest regeneration because fencing can be quite cost prohibitive. And we also wanna maintain good hunter participation. Our hunter run track contains 10 of these plots to monitor the indicators plant species that are affected by deer browsing. 
The plots will help determine if reductions of the deer herd would be beneficial to our overall forest health and protect our native species diversity. And that really helps, uh, promoting DMAP helps to increase pressure on the deer, specifically at our hunter run tract, and helps alleviate browsing effects on trees trying to grow, as well as increasing our new regeneration. So it is extremely beneficial for us managing that tract of land. So regarding our watersheds and water resources here in the district, we lie in the Ohio Basin, and there's three sub watersheds to that, the Muddy Creek, Sugar Creek, and Upper Allegheny River. Water is really one of the most valuable resources here in the corn planter, and like timber, it's renewable. Um, so to protect it uh, really is, is of highest priority. Every activity that we do in our district considers the impacts to water and how, what, what it'll have on the integrity of that watershed. And, and again, some of the, the water resources on our state forest land is our Anders Run natural area, uh, Anders Run and Anders Run natural area. We have four streams on our Hunter Run tract, which is again, Hunter Run, Jamison Run, McCafferty Run, and an unnamed tri tributary to Dawson Run. And on our Strawbridge tract, we have a tributary to Muddy Creek, it's not classified, um, and other significant features such as vernal pools and forested wetlands. And again, we use best management practices, including maintaining buffers to help protect water quality because it is one of our most valuable resources. In our district, we have many water features and resources that support special aquatic life, provide excellent recreational opportunity, opportunities, and contain rich cultural histories. And these are just a few here in our district um, of these special places. Successful accomplishment of our mission really can't happen without inventory, planning, and administration of our infrastructure assets. Our Bureau maintenance staff manages infrastructure on our corn planter state forest, including roads, trails, maintenance facilities, our Ingram Pavilion, culverts, uh, one motorized campsite, boundary lines and district office grounds, which includes our Arboretum. In addition, several kiosks, deer enclosure, closures for education and parking lots are maintained by our dedicated staff for your education, enjoyment and use. The Bureau of Forestry's mission includes the conservation of native wild plants, so on our state forest land and other lands across Pennsylvania, the Bureau is committed to conserving native plant species, protecting rare threatened or endangered plants, managing or enhancing vegetation communities, classifying plants, and addressing invasive species in all ecosystems. We do have some special designations for plant conservation, such as those wild and natural areas, wild plant sanctuaries, and high conservation forests. Anders Run is a natural area and high conservation forest. We don't have any wild plant sanctuaries on our state forest land, but there are many, many in our district. We limit certain management activities in these areas to conserve our sensitive plant resources. Examples of that would be our Anders Run natural area, again, containing some of the finest stands of mature white pine and hemlock, some two to 400 years old our extensive wetlands on our Ingram tr Strawbridge tract, and even many native shrubs like this hobble bush and various wildflowers that bloom in the Northwest region on various tracts of our state forest land. Wildflower walks both on and off our state forest land are offered regularly. Important to conserving native plants is the detection and eradication of non-native plants, or what we call invasive plants. An invasive plant is a name really for a, a plant that grows aggressively, spreads and displaces other plants. Their establishment causes or is likely to cause economic, environmental or human harm. And an example of that would be the giant knotweed in the top right portion of your screen. That was first discovered here in our district and has since spread across Pennsylvania and is, is very well known uh, throughout Pennsylvania. Invasive plants really tend to not be native to North America. Again, spread quickly and mature quickly. They're generalists, so they can grow in multiple different environments and they also exploit their environments. 
In short, they can be expensive to control and environmentally destructive. Some native species can be aggressive and cause environmental impacts to native and fern savanna. This picture is not from our state forest land, although we do have hay scented fern in, in spots across our, our state forest. Um, but really what we're looking at here is no regeneration, not even a mid story, we just have an overstory. So again, even native plants can be considered invasive. The most common invasive plant species on our state forest, um, looking at this counterclockwise is multiflora rose, Japanese barberry, Japanese stilt grass and Japanese knotweed. As well as autumn and Russian olive, honeysuckle, garlic mustard, and phragmites, or common reed. We're constantly surveying for new population of all these species, as well as for glossy buckthorn, and that's pictured here, monopolizing the background. All that green is glossy buckthorn. And it can really have devastating impacts this plant particularly to both terrestrial and riparian ecosystems. It's currently not on our state forest land, but this is an example of something that we monitor for annually, um, almost every time we're out in the forest. Each year, district staff can locate and spot treat many of these invasive plant species with approved herbicides on all of our corn planter state forest tracks, which is of high priority annually and specifically before any management activity occurs in these areas. Treatments are usually from July and last until early September. Yearly treatments help keep population of these invasive plants from spreading further into the forest. An advantage for us here in the corn planter is the scale of our forest. We have the ability to monitor, address, and significantly impact these biotic damaging agents before they become out of control. Insect and disease outbreaks have been noted through the years, but no single event has caused damage or mortality. Significant frost damage does occur from time to time. Our district staff continues to monitor for spotted lanternfly, including its host tree, Tree of Heaven, as well as other pathogens through our early detection rapid response efforts. Because with the changing climate, we're we do see a shift of species and non-native species are increasing their range. So we're always trying to, to detect and monitor this. Our district staff supports our division of forest health to keep invasive insect populations under forest, specifically our Hunter Run Tract, our Ingram Strawbridge Tract, and our Anders Run Natural Area, which is of a high priority and it does contain most of the trees that we treat. We perform aerial applications to control spongy moth outbreaks in our state forest lands and parks when, when needed and when outbreaks occur. And we constantly monitor for uh, in, um, insects like hemlock woolly adelgid, particularly at our Anders Run natural area due to its ecological and cultural significance, as well as to help protect this special resource. We're mandated by law to, uh, to, to respond to, suppress, and investigate fires. Our fire forester assists with wildfire suppression on both state and private lands, as well as helping and assisting our volunteer fire departments in training and the obtaining of equipment for safe and effective control of wildfires. Prescribed fire is an important tool that we have uh, in forest management, we as in the, as in the Bureau. But due to the limited track sizes of our corn planter state forest, it's most likely an application of prescribed fire would be a landscape level project assisting cooperative agencies and not necessarily a tool um, in our state forest system. In our district, and this is hot off the press in 2023, uh, we've had a total of 92 wildfires covering 119.8 acres with an average size of 1.3 acres. And debris burning continues to be the biggest cause of wildfires in our district and really statewide. All staff support our wildfire program. The Warren District Office serves as the primary fire desk and dispatch. Forester on fire observer as seen in these pictures. 
on days that are really conducive for wildfire, um, will fly in the air and, and do reconnaissance. This route includes most of the Allegheny National Forest. Historically, fire or lookout towers really played an important role in the detection and responding to wildfires across the Commonwealth. Currently, we maintain four of them, and one's in Marionville and Forest County along US Route 66, and that was built in 1921. Our Tyanesta Tower in Forest County, that includes the Watchman Cabin, that was built in 1928. The Wheeler Tower in Warren County, across from the US Forest Service Hearts Content Campgrounds, that was built in 1922. And the Plumer Tower in Venango County on State Gamelands 253, and that was built in 1935. Our district forester, fire forester, and staff provide training to forest fire wardens and wildfires, uh, fire, firefighters annually. We provide many fire prevention programs and activities, including parades, fairs, school events, and sporting events, reaching nearly 20,000 people annually. So it's a big part of our district and really a big part of the state. Another essential element is the detection and the suppression of wildfires through our fire warden organization. Fire wardens perform many duties under the direction of our district forest fire warden or a district forester. And this organization was created in 1915. Pennsylvania has the oldest volunteer warden organization in the country. And the corn planter district has been very fortunate have always had trained and dedicated group of fire wardens. And this, this statistic is from 2019, but as in 2019, there were 52 wardens, 17 warden crews and 222 uh, trained wildland crew members. So our mission statement clearly identifies the environmentally sound utilization of our mineral resources, which includes oil, gas, coal, hard minerals as a key component of our land management. This activity does could contribute uh, significantly to our economy and does provide a source of domestic energy. Given the host of potential impacts of the shale gas development to our state forest resources, uses and values, we established a shale gas monitoring program that tracks, detects and reports on the beneficial and adverse effects of the activity. The program aims to provide objective and credible information to the public and inform you uh, of improved shale gas monitoring efforts. Owing to the limited size of our corn planter, little is expected in the way of hard mineral, mineral development, except for little bit limited road shale extraction or small flagstone pits, maybe to build, uh, build a, a road for a timber sale or, or improve a road. The district has been working with our minerals division and the DEP on a capital well plugging contract across our corn planter forest. 12 wells were included in phase two of this project, which may begin this summer. And we currently do not have any shale or stone pits or hard mineral projects planned for 2023 on the corn planter. So what can you do in the corn planter state forest? Well, our state forest provides a unique opportunity for dispersed low density recreation. And we offer various types of recreation, including hunting, hiking, offered throughout our state forest land on more than 10 miles of trails with easy to more difficult trails and no most difficult trail ratings. Benches and signage are located along trails to enhance your experience, again, as well as those difficulty ratings. We offer unique camping opportunities in a relaxed and primitive setting. Primitive camping is permitted throughout all of our state forest lands. We only allow primitive camping in designated areas at Anders Run Natural Area. Primitive camping within 200 foot of a road, within 25 feet of a trail, and within 100 foot of any stream or open water is not permitted. That is not considered primitive camping. We have one motorized campsite at our Hunter Run Tract. It does not contain electric hookups. Permits and reservations are required to stay at the motorized roadside campsite. Primitive camping does not need a permit if you're staying no more than one night. If you are, then you do need a permit. And if you require an emergency contract, uh, contact, 
or if a campfire is requested during wildfire season, which is March, April, or May, you, you do need a permit. Several state forest tracks, including our district office, feature picnic tables and small benches along our trails. On our Ingram Strawbridge tract, that offers a covered pavilion and several picnic tables. There are excellent hunting and trapping opportunities on our state forest land. Mountain biking is permitted on all the trails except our Lashore Trail at an or Lashore Trail and in our Anders Run Natural Area. E-bikes are permitted on approved mountain bike trails and roads, but the bikes must meet specific standards. Fishing is available and served on our state forest land. That includes Jameson, McCafferty, and Hunter Run. We have six miles of cross-country ski trails that wind through our Hunter Run tract. We offer horseback riding on one tract in Crawford County, and that's the Ingram Strawbridge Tract. Burning and nature observing, including spring wildflowers and wetlands are popular activities on our state forest, as well as scenic driving. And we also border the Allegheny National Forest that provides many complementing recreational activities. Maps and information of all this can be found on our website or by calling our district office. So to highlight some of these tracks or our tracks, uh, the Anders Run Natural Area is in the central portion of Warren County near Youngsville. It's a 99 acre old growth forest, white pine, hemlock and mixed hardwoods. Again, some of these trees are two to 400 years old. Old growth characteristics can be found here, including large old trees, down woody debris and multiple age classes. Anders Run, a stream found in the valley supports a broad array of, array of aquatic life and that includes lampreys. We have two miles of maintained trails here designed for low density recreation that help you traverse this really unique ecosystem that we gladly have part of a, as a part of our state forest land. Other recreational opportunities here include hunting, viewing over 50 types of native, native wildflowers and various forest interior birds and mammals. You can also witness some history by viewing our little stone house, which is that special historical site on this track. Permit of camping, as I mentioned, is only allowed in designated areas here. Biking and horseback riding are not permitted. We look to include in the future interpretive opportunities, which we're pursuing, including the history of the Irvine estate, the railroad grade on the Eastern boundary, old growth forests, and even possibly spring ephemerals. This is our Hunter Run and our Tank Hill tracks, again, our largest tract, totaling 1,263 acres. And it offers many recreational opportunities for, for the public. It has the Lashore Trail, which is a hiking only trail. It's an interpretive trail. And it's named in honor of Ray Lashore, who was a former fire warden who worked and suppressed many wildfires throughout his career. The trail is about a half mile long, and that includes 20 interpretive stations, each de detailing a specific forest feature, such as wetlands, uh, plantations, different forest communities and species, all to provide a unique recreational experience and help you learn more about our forest and management. Other recreational opportunities include seven miles of hiking, snowshoe, and cross country ski trails, geocaching large and small game hunting are also popular. Bird watching, wildflowers, pet walking, environmental education. And for those who just simply want to enjoy nature, this track brings all those possibilities. And as I mentioned, the Allegheny National Forest borders our eastern boundary on this track and really makes this track truly part of a bigger forested landscape that provides additional benefits uh, to you when you're coming here to recreate. Our last, uh, last tracks are Ingram tracks near Townville, PA in Crawford County. Our largest track is our Strawbridge tract and that's 82 acres, followed by Fonstown at 34, I'm sorry, at nine and, and Townville at 34. The Strawbridge Track contains two and a half miles of maintained trails designed for low, inten low intensity recreation. We have hiking, biking, horseback riding, 
Hunting, again, geocaching and cross country ski trails are common recreational activities here, as well as primitive camping. This area is also popular for, again, bird watching, pet walking, environmental education, uh, and wetland observations. Some of these wetlands include a platform. A covered picnic shelter and trail benches make this tract a comfortable and popular family property. Another point of interest includes our native hobble bush, a small shrub really preferred by deer. It can be found in a fenced area uh, or deer enclosure in the northwest uh, area of our picnic. This trail contains three wide uh, wayside information panels that help interpret the different forest management activities that have been going on over the years in honor of Gerald Ingram's wishes and to provide education to you about these special resources. We have plenty of other recreational opportunities outside, outside our state forest land that complement our state forests. That includes fishing, boating, swimming, motorized and or tent camping, which is offered at many nearby rivers, lakes and state parks. The Allegheny National Forest, again, is, is right next door with 513,000 acres and 600 plus miles of trails, just jaw dropping. In addition to Anders Run, you can visit another old growth stand nearby at Heart's Content, and that's in the Allegheny National Forest. That's designated as a nat national natural landmark that has 20 acres of old growth forest and 120, 102 acres of national scenic area. We're also part of the Great Lakes region and the Pennsylvania wilds, and both offer some of the best outdoor recreation activities in North America. And we're happy to be a part of both of these regions. Our management and care really extend well beyond our state forest land management. The corn planter forest district service foresters like myself, not only manage our state forest land, but a large part of our work is to help private landowners, the largest ownership of forested lands in our district, manage and care for their lands based on their goals. Promote sustainable forestry, so we act as a primary point of contact to provide forestry education and outreach, riparian buffer assistance, offer public programs, and forest and insect and disease technical assistance. We do this by creating vibrant community forest. So while mostly rural, our district does have several large population centers, including the city of Erie. We continue to reach out to these communities to provide assistance and information to help them maintain their community forest. And this audience really includes county, municipal, school district properties, street trees, and any other public wooded areas. Another goal is to support robust forest product markets. And that's done by connecting landowners and communities to the various forest product industries, as well as, as, well as encouraging sustainable forestry practices. Another goal is to improve ecosystem health. We do this by increasing awareness about threats to our ecosystem, identifying local forest health assistance treatments, by building empowered con constituencies, uh, we can function as a go-to organization for reliable forestry information in Northwestern Pennsylvania, as well as communicate the importance and benefits of proper forest management through presentations like this, shows, conferences, and field days. We recognize and conserve special places and resources that includes unique habitats, unusual geological features, aesthetic values, historical sites, protected plants and animal communities. And we connect to private landowners and communities with groups that have goals of conserving these special resources and places. And finally, we do a lot of uh, providing conservation leadership. We're a reliable source of information for our partners, agencies, and other leaders in the district. And we, do, and we stay informed and align partners to encourage collaboration and further <coughs> conservation efforts. <coughs> These are some of the sustainable uh, forestry partners, the many local groups, organizations, and entities that help spread our mission of promoting sustainable forestry. And that includes conservation districts, other agencies, urban forestry organizations, 
private forest land, landowner organization, land conservation organizations, watershed groups, and conservation education centers, among many, many others. So I'd like to leave today with some parting thoughts about caring for our resources throughout the district and state so we can all enjoy Penn's Woods together. We should take time to practice leave no trace so we can ensure that our forests and parks remain premier outdoor designations for generations to come. We wanna keep campfires small and put them out completely. We don't wanna start a wildfire. So be mindful of spring and fall wildfire risks. Be considerate to other vis visitors, respect and never feed wildlife. Plant native plants, please stay away from non-native plants. <laughs> If you own land and if you have questions, please contact us as service foresters. We're here to help you any way we can. And if you want more information on our corn planter state forest, recreation or even volunteer opportunities, please contact our forest district office. And thank you for your time today. And, and I'm happy to help answer any questions you may have. All right. Uh, thank you, Stephen. That was a lot of great information about Corn Planter. Um, at this time, I realize that it is the top of the hour, so um, we had a few folks that had to bounce, but for those of you who are still around, um, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and put them in the chat at this time, and I can read them off uh, for Stephen to answer. Mm -hmm. It might be a quiet group today. <laughs> the wildfire smoke from Canada was affecting me a little bit too, so. <laughs> and if we don't have any questions, that's completely fine as well. Um, if you think of any questions after we stop recording today, um, please reach out to myself or reach out to, uh, to uh, Stephen. His um, email contact is right here on this slide, and I'll share it out with everyone when I share out the recording. Um, and um, yes, so thank you for joining us today. Um, Stephen, thank you for all of the information. And um, thank you, Sarah. No problem at all. And we'll be, like I said, we'll be sharing out the recording um, sometime later this week. All right. Um, enjoy the rest of your week, folks. Um, try, try to stay safe with the smoke out there and, um, don't start any fires. <laughs> Good message, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Bye. Thank you.